let us come back to the part B of your chapter. Right. In the part, in part A, we have studied completely about your adsorption concept. We have studied about the theories of your adsorption. We also studied about enzymes. We also studied about catalysis, enzyme catalysis. And I also gave you the concept of activity and selectivity. So now when we come back to part B concept here, we are going to study about your colloids. Before going into the concept of the colloids, <coughs> where I will be teaching you about the preparation of colloids, purification techniques, right? And I will be uh, properties of colloids and all these. Let's come back and learn the differences between true solutions, colloids and suspensions. Basically, I just gave you this for your information, but they ask you this particular question from your, for your, for from this chapter, I don't want you to miss that question. So let's write. So whenever some difference is given to you, first important thing is the criteria. So the property, this is where your mark lies. <clears throat> if you know these properties or if you know the criteria on which you, you are differentiating, you will be getting full marks for that. Let's start. So true solutions, colloids and suspensions, let us differentiate them based on size. So when I have to say, see the size of a true solution, uh, this one, it is every, this, you have already studied this difference in grade 11, but for your information, I'm doing it again. True solution, the size is less than one nanometer. When I have to speak about colloids, the size varies from one nanometer to thousand nanometers. So when I speak about the suspensions, it's greater than thousand nanometers. Yes, done. Let's come back. Then I have to speak about <coughs> the visibility. Visibility means whether you can see it with your naked eye or do you require a microscope to watch that. So when I have to speak about the visibility, true solutions because of their very smaller size, they are not visible. Right? Here, when I have to come back to colloid, a bit higher than that, they are also not visible. But, <coughs> but if I can use an ultra microscope right if i use that the images can be visible so can be or images can be images can be visible by ultra microscope okay this is done man when i have to come back to the suspensions suspension the size is a bit bigger isn't it it is greater than thousand meters than meters i can easily see with my naked eye so i can write I can see of visible with naked eye. Done. So let's come back and do the next criteria. When I have to separate this two solution suspension in this in colloid. So as I said, the size is very small. <clears throat> so can we separate with filter paper? No, it can't be not possible. And again, the same the parchment membrane or the animal membrane. When I take the animal membrane, again, the pore size is like uh, a bit smaller. So the particle size also is smaller, isn't it? One nanometer is too small, isn't it? Isn't it? So this also parchment membrane also not possible. That. When I have to come back to colloids, normal filter paper in the lab, no, I can't filter them. So, not possible filtration by normal filter paper is not possible. But when I have to go with the parchment paper, yes, because the particle size ranges from 1 nanometer to 1000 nanometers, yes, it is possible to filter it through parchment membrane. I'm talking about this one here. I'm talking about the second one here. Done. When I have to come back to suspensions, yes, the size is greater than 1000 nanometers. So, this is possible here. To filter paper, this also is possible. Done. So, let's come back and see the nature. Nature means basically is it homogeneous? Is it evenly spread or does it form two separate layers? That is your nature. So, whenever I have to speak about this true solution because the particle size is very small, nature is they are homogeneous in nature, evenly distributed. Right. When I have to see the nature of the colloids, yes, because the particle size range is still 1000 nanometers, these are hetero. <coughs> you can separate them because <coughs> they form layers. And suspension, if this is heterogeneous, this also will be heterogeneous. So let's come back and see further differences. Let us come back and finish off the last three properties, appearance. So appearance means how does this appear? When you watch with your naked eye, when you see a true solution, how does it look? It's basically transparent in nature because of the size of the particle is less than one nanometer, they are transparent. So here <coughs> I'm going to speak about colloids. I can say it's just like a starch colloid. It's turbid, isn't it? You find the stickiness in that solution. So when I speak about suspensions, they are opaque in nature. 
right done yes let's come back so when i have to see the diffusion three membranes what did we say we said uh, like uh, the particle size is less than one nanometer so it may is uh, simple isn't it when the particle size is very small it can easily diffuse through the membranes so i can write diffuses readily right now here the particle size is a bit increasing so you can write diffuses slowly so the particle size is greater than 1000 nanometers so does not diffuse does not diffuse this is okay done i am done with this now when i have to speak the last settling property very important concept so settling means <clears throat> when you place that particular uh, true solution under gravity you're placing that true solution you're taking true solution you're keeping it in a beaker and leaving it so what is that what are you observing does it settle under gravity or it does not settle now let's come back and see the last property that is your settling property so when i have to speak about true solutions when i take it in the beaker and leave it in and like you're placing it under gravity so how are you observing are the particles settling immediately or this forming layers so when I observe the two solutions they do not settle <coughs> because the particle size is very small enough isn't it right so here when I have to speak about colloids a bit higher than this so they okay, under what did I say do not settle under gravity okay the same thing I'm comparing here they do not settle under gravity okay but how can i make them settle i can settle i can use the concept of centrifugal force where it continuously rotates and finally it that due to gravity it's pulled down so that centrifugal force will make the true colloid or uh, make the colloids uh, settle down so i can write do not settle down under gravity but <coughs> settles down under centri fugal force done let's come back and see this suspension the particle size is very large it's greater than 1000 nanometers so they readily settle the heavy isn't it readily settle down under gravity that's it so these are your differences so let's come back and start with your colloids topic